Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here is a really interesting project where I took an action-adventure game and converted it into an RTS. It's got all of the mechanics you would expect from something like Age of Empires or Command & Conquer, so there's villagers gathering resources, constructing buildings, enemies, combat, and so on. It's kind of interesting how this game also works as an example of what you can build as a hobby project. I've been working on this game on and off for about two months now. Some other projects had to take priority, so I wasn't constantly working on it, but I think the total time to build this was around 20 hours. It's kind of the same thing that happened when I made my factory sim game, also around that time spread throughout one or two months. So both of these games are great examples of the kind of thing that you can build if you have a day job and can only work on it for 10 or 20 hours per month. The making of this game also involved a live stream where people in chat caused it to descend into complete chaos thanks to an exploit in my live chat characters, so more on that in a bit. Okay, so let's see how this idea got started and how I took that action-adventure game as a starting point and it ended up with this awesome RTS. Do you prefer learning through a more guided path rather than separate tutorials? Then check out my complete step-by-step -step courses starting from scratch until the final polished games. If you're into programming, then get the awesome Builder Defender course, learn how I make my own games using code, build an awesome game that involves mechanics from city builders, tower defense, and survival games. Or if you're into visual scripting, then get the VS course, which features not one, but three complete games. A simple platformer, an action RPG, and an awesome FPS. In the visual scripting course, all of this is built without a single line of code. All games in both courses start completely from scratch and go step by step until the final polished games, all of the lectures have their project files available at every step of the way, and I'm always active answering questions every single day in the Q&A section. So if you're looking for a more guided path, then check out the courses at unitycodemonkey.com courses. So a couple of months ago, Unity started a really awesome initiative called Unity Open Projects. The goal is to build a game from start to finish and share that process publicly so anyone can follow and see how a game is made step by step. The project is led by an official team inside of Unity, but anyone can contribute to it. The home project is on GitHub, so you can download it, figure out something you want to do, and submit a pull request. It's a really awesome idea, and there's already been tons of community contributions. For me, I really like this initiative, but I haven't been able to contribute simply because I can't quite fit it into my schedule. I work at a very fast pace on lots of things at once, which makes it hard to do any kind of collaborations. But still, I wanted to do something with it. So that's where I came up with the idea of why don't I try taking the game and remake it into a completely different genre. And RTS is a genre that I love, but I haven't done many videos on it, so this seemed like the perfect combination. So with that, the plan was set. Take this action-adventure game and turn it into an RTS. As usual, I like to think on paper when doing my designs, so I just write whatever comes to mind with whatever questions I need to ask, just so I have a clear overview of the direction I'm going in. With the core of the game defined, I got to work on making it a reality. I simply downloaded the latest version of the game from the project GitHub, then I inspected the included scene with all of the art assets to see what I could adapt onto the RTS game. It's got tons of characters, buildings, trees and rocks, so I knew I had enough assets to make it work. I made a new scene, copied some assets and started to work. Now some of you might already be familiar with what I'm showing here, that's because quite a bit of this game was built during two live streams. The first one started pretty much right on the beginning of this project, I just had a character visual and nothing else. So as soon as I started that first livestream, the first task was adding some RTS movement. For this one, I went with the easiest thing possible, just using Unity's navmesh. It's super simple to set up, just bake the navmesh, add the agent component, and through code set the destination. It's super easy and it's perfect for quickly getting a character to move around an area with pathfinding. Then, since this is an RTS, one of the main things is the controls. I need to be able to select a single or multiple units and give some orders. I cover this topic in detail in another video if you want to learn more. Here I just reused pretty much the exact same code from that video, I just had to adapt it slightly to make it work with 3D. So at this point, I could select any units I want and even make a selection area to select multiple at once. Oh, and if you haven't seen the live streams, these characters down in the bottom are the people in chat. It's a fun thing that also covered how it works in another video. They show the people currently in chat and whatever messages they're saying. These live streams are unplanned ahead of time, so if you want to know when I go live, make sure you hit the bell icon. Then for the first type of logic, I made some gathering. The unit simply goes towards a resource node and starts gathering that resource. It's just a very, very basic state machine. I made a full playlist a long time ago with this kind of logic, it's all pretty simple. Next up was handling the actual resources. 
So I did that as usual, I made a singleton resource manager to handle the resource amount and anything to do with resources. Then I just had a very basic UI to keep track of the current amount. After that, it was time to add some enemies. So I grabbed another asset from the Chop Chop Open project, a really nice looking slime, added some health bars and made some basic enemy patrol logic. With that, it was time to make some buildings. So I used scriptable objects to define the types and created some prefabs to instantiate them. If you've seen my grid building system, then what I did here is pretty much exactly that. Also made a building ghost exactly in the same way as on that grid building system, just a nice way to visualize where the place building will be built. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button, it's a tiny thing but it really does help, thanks. Then up until this point the units didn't have any animations, so I just grabbed the ones from the open project and added them, it's got some really nice walking animations. And then for gathering I use the same as the attack animations which do look pretty good. So the enemies attack the rock and they gather some resources. Then this was the point when I started the second livestream. So by this stage the game was already looking pretty good, it was already a nice RTS base. Next up was adding some more resource types. I did it by using the super useful scriptable objects for each resource type. So each resource node contains a different resource type. This is pretty much exactly what I do in my Builder Defender course. In there I also use a resource manager to hold the various resource types which are then used to construct buildings. Also quickly made a UI element to display them, so it just listens to events fired by the resource manager to know when to update the UI. Then I made the barracks building, so this is what actually constructs the units. There are some buttons to select which unit you want to make, and a nice building queue just like pretty much every RTS game. So it constructs the units one by one, and of course they also have a resource cost. Then adding a camera system, so adding the ability to move left, right, forwards and backwards as well as zoom in and out. And here at this point, I also needed to manage the depth of field effect through code. So this was something that I had never done before, but since I was doing this while on the livestream, the chat was a huge help. Essentially, you need to find the specific class for that specific effect, so the depth of field, and in that class you can then modify that object. So it's really nice how it's something that I didn't know how to do, and we all learned together thanks to the live chat. With all of that, the RTS minigame was really starting to take shape, so I made a quick demo on the livestream. With a bunch of characters, it really already starts to look like a proper game. Next up, adding some more unit types. So for the visual, since I can't really model or texture, all I did was just recolor the basic character. I made a simple ranged attack unit. It just spawns an arrow when it finds an enemy within range. That arrow moves towards the enemy and deals damage. Very simple. And then, if you've seen the livestream, then this is the point when it all turned to chaos. Essentially, on my livestream units, I have a chat bubble that shows what someone posts in chat, and those chat bubbles are simply made using TextMesh Pro. Well, it turns out that someone figured out that TextMesh Pro supports rich text by default, so if you type in some tags, like size and color, you can make the text look quite different. So, yep, obviously, some people started posting messages with a huge font size and the whole livestream just to send into chaos. It was very chaotic, but also very fun. I can always count on chat to find some hidden exploits into whatever code I write. So make sure you join me on the next livestream, and who knows, maybe you won't find another exploit. Okay, so after that, it was time to work on updating the building visuals. I grabbed some more objects from the Unity Open Project and added them to the prefabs. Then I made lots of enemies to see how their patrol logic worked along with static ranged enemies. One crucial element to pretty much any RTS is a minimap, so that's what I built next. I made this in a separate video quite a while ago, but it's still up to date. It's extremely easy to make. You just create a different camera, put it above the map, and make it render only a specific layer. Then you add simple quads to all the objects and place them on that layer. And finally you take that camera and you render it onto a render texture and simply display that in the UI. It's super simple to add, and with that I had another excellent RTS element. Then polishing up the UI with some proper building icons and a unselected arrow button. I added some limits to the resource node, so after gathering a bunch of them, the node gets destroyed and the gatherers automatically go look for another one of the same type. After that, adding the building construction stage. Again, I did it exactly like I did in my Builder Defender course. Just a separate stage where the villager units go towards it and they construct to increase the building progress and when it's done the final building pops up. After that I just did a ton more small things, so I polished up the enemies, made the enemy spawners, expanded the map with some more resource nodes, polished a few more things and after all that here is the final result. Alright, so here I am in my awesome RTS game. 
I've got my starting area right here. All I have are three starting villagers and a bunch of starting resources. And I can control my camera, I can move anywhere, see anything, and I can zoom in and out. So really nice stuff. Now the first thing I need is to construct a storage so I can use my really nice buttons. They also have a really nice tooltip where you can see the object name and the resource cost. So this one costs 5 wood, 5 stone and 5 iron. I also covered this tooltip in detail in another video if you want to learn. So up here let's select the storage and place the storage down here. As soon as I click, there you go, now it is in construction. So in order to build it, let's grab a villager and tell it to go there. So just go and they move towards it and they start attacking it, which is constructing. And there you go, the construction progress bar is constantly going up. And once it reaches, yep, there it is, we have our storage. So now I can take these guys and say, you go grab some wood, you grab some iron, and you grab some stone. All right, so there they go. They move towards it, they start gathering. There you go, that one just gathered a bunch of wood, that one a bunch of iron, and that one a bunch of stone. All right, so now I can afford to build a barracks. So let me grab this guy, move him in here. Let's place a barracks down there, and you go and construct that. The other ones keep gathering those, okay. So there it is, almost done constructing. I can tell all of them to construct at once, but just one is more than good enough. And there you go, it is built. So you go back into gathering that one, and I can click on it to show up the barracks UI, and over here I can select any of these units. So in this case, let's say I want to build a melee and a ranged unit. And there you go. There you go. They do the creation progress. And once it happens, yep, here I've got my ranged unit and my melee unit. All right, so I can see I have some enemies next to me. I can see them on the minimap. So right here to the right, yep, a whole bunch of enemies and the enemy spawner. So let's select both of these guys, go in and let's attack that ranged unit. So there you go, they attack, and yep, my poor guy can't handle it, all of them. So he's actually got way too much health, but yep, there you go, he can't do it. And this enemy spawner is also constantly spawning new enemies, so I must take it down quickly. So I need a bunch more units to be able to destroy it. So let's make a bunch more villagers to gather some resources faster. And now make a bunch more attack units. All right, already got quite a bunch of units, so a bunch of gatherers, and they're almost done gathering all of these resources. So let's grab these guys and see if I can start taking them down. So there you go, they start attacking, they start taking down those, and now they start taking out the enemy spawner, and once it's done, boom, they're gone. So I got my units, they've taken over this area, and now I can see on the side here, I've got some more stone. So let's capture this area. Alright, so this area is now taken over, so I can go ahead, grab some of my villagers, all of you come over here, and then in here let's build another storage. So I've got another storage, and now I can tell them to go and gather in there, and now they gather from there and they drop it in there instead of going all the way back over here. Alright, so that's the final game. It's got all of the basic RTS mechanics you would expect. You can download the project files to see how all of the code works. And if you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide on how quite a lot of the systems used here work, then go ahead and grab my Builder Defender course. A lot of the things that I made here, like the building construction, resource management, UI and so on, a lot of that I covered in detail during that course. So if you're interested in this genre, then go ahead and check it out. This was an interesting project to work on, taking a game and remaking it into a completely different genre. Again, go check out the official Unity Open Projects. That game is still actively being worked on, so there's still time for you to submit something and contribute to that project. It's a really interesting Unity initiative, so go ahead and check it out. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.